Hello again, Fishalots. It's Johnny Fishalot here, and let's get straight into the action of how you could catch more fish with these five tips each and every time you go out fishing for flounder or fluke, depending where you live in the country. And tip number one is the spots and the tactics that you used yesterday, last week, whenever, do not necessarily mean that you're going to catch fish today. And so this is a good indicator of how you could kind of figure this out during the day. It's the first drop. It's the very end of the incoming tide. And this fish is going to tell me a lot about how I'm going to fish this particular part of the time. And that is that it's foul hooked. So I was jigging very aggressively as you just saw and this fish is foul hooked which means that that fish came up aggressively and hit the teaser so that fish didn't just foul hook itself on the bucktail it went after the teaser and i got him with the bottom hook that means that i could fish aggressively higher in the strike zone away from those very sticky rocks and boulders that structure that we're drawing the fish out of that will save you a ton of money in jigs and rigging because that'll limit the amount that you find yourself hung in the wreck hung in the rocks the boulders below you now Tip number two is going to go hand in hand with tip number one and adjusting your tactics. And that is pay attention to what the people are doing around you. So look, if you have six fish a lots in the boat, you have one fish a little higher in the strike zone, one fish is slow, one fish is fast. And you kind of get the idea. This way, if you're getting more bites on one type of tactic, Everybody can adjust their tactics, everybody can catch fish, and the boat's crew can work together in putting together a really good catch for the day. So just pay attention to the presentation of others as you're fishing. So you can see here, Jan is fishing a little bit slower, jigging, I'm fishing more aggressively higher in the water column. And you'll see Tom here fishing to my right. He's not quite fishing as slow as Jan, and he's not fishing as fast as I am, but he's right on the bottom, and he's right in between those two retrieve speeds, and you'll see that's going to trigger the bites when the tide turned. Now we're into a slack tide, and these fish became much less aggressive with the lack of water movement. And there he is right there reeling in the fish. And we're going to have to adjust our tactics to a much less aggressive bite. And look, ask some questions. So he just plugged a fish right next to me, and I didn't get a bite. So a couple of questions I ask is, were you right on bottom? The answer was yes. I know he was doing a moderate jigging speed. And what did the bite feel like? So in this case, the bite didn't feel like anything. It actually felt like he was caught in a rock and it was a little bit spongy. So the rock moved a little bit. And so that's when he set the hook. That is some vital intel because a lot of times people think flounder will just come up and boom, nail the jig. And that's when you set the hook. But it's not always that easy. These bites were very, very subtle and very finicky. And you really had to know what you're doing. So check it out. Here's, here's the hook set for Tom's fish right here. You can see he kind of feels a little bit of extra weight and he drops back to the fish just a little bit to make sure the fish maintains weight make sure the fish had the hook in its mouth and then he sets the hook now i'm going to adjust my own tactics here you could tell i'm jigging much slower than i was before and here you go i'm going to feel that weight of the fish just like tom said i'm going to give it just a minute and now I'm going to set the hook and this is going to be how we're going to catch fish through the whole rest of the day. But working together and monitoring what our presentations were like and what we were doing, we were able to sort this out. And by the end of the day, we were able to amount a very nice catch on a very difficult day fishing. And tip number three here is going to come to no surprise any fish a lot that follows my channel regularly and it's you have to find the fish first so you have to find the structure you have to find the active feeding fish and here you can see by that depth finder that big dark red those are those giant boulders that we're fishing that's where the fish are hanging out that's where our bites are going to come and that's where we focus the majority of our attention now let's head over to the charts this way i could show you exactly the type of areas that we were focusing on that late outgoing tide where we we're focusing our attention on those deep water rock piles so we we're fishing in anywhere from 55 to 68 feet of water indicated by this chart and then of course we moved from these deeper water areas indicated by that arrow of course to shallow water rock piles because we wanted to take advantage of the water movement from the early outgoing tides because we want to take advantage of that 90 10 rule where 90 percent of the fish are going to be active in only 10 percent of the water so when the bite died offshore where there wasn't a whole lot of water movement we wanted to take advantage of the inshore water movement where those fish are more likely to be much more active and a great way to hone in on this 90 10 rule is by applying three basic 
principles that all fish follow, and that is they will seek comfort, access to food, and protection from predators. So we have the comfort and the water movement, water temperature, we have the structure, we have access to the food, and a lot of bait is around, but... From protection from predators, we absolutely had a fleet of boats of 4,000 fish a dragging their jigs over these flounder, and the bite shut down. Nothing will shut off a good bite like a giant fleet of boats, and that's exactly what happened. So we picked up our jigs, and we moved offshore, and we waited out the bite for that offshore fish where not a lot of boats were out there. And tip number four, of course, is don't be afraid to lose your gear. So I just showed you how big those rock piles are. It's very sticky. You're going to lose some jig edge. You're going to lose some bucktails. Don't worry about it. You got to be in it to win it, as they say. In order to be in it, that's where the flounder are. So I see this all the time, especially with like bass fishermen. There's a really sticky piece of tree hanging in the water. And it's like, well, I don't want to throw it in there because I don't want to lose my new fancy lure. Or, or whatever. Don't worry about it, you know? You're out fishing. The purpose is to catch fish. It's something you don't really see a lot on the YouTubes or on the fishing TV. Nobody wants to show you how much money they went through in rigs. But I could tell you on this trip, I went through about 50 bucks. And look, there's me retying a rig. There's Jan retying his rig. Oh, here comes Frank. Frank just finished tying his rig. So he had more than 50% of the boat out retying rigs because we're fishing over the structure that the fish live in. So don't worry about it. And one way to mitigate your costs, of course, is just by going with a cheaper rig. So you can just do a classic high-low rig with a couple of hooks and some bait or a chicken rig, which is just a couple of imitation squid on there. I love my bucktail, so I always go with a modified high-low rig with a bucktail and either a number three Gamagatsu bait hook with a gulp on it or a tsunami glass minnow teaser. You know, when I get hung in the rack, I lose a little bit of money, but I'm willing to accept that risk. Make sure you tie your bucktail to a weaker knot, like a surgeon's loop knot. This way, when you do get hung in the wreck, like you just saw me here, I'm not losing my whole rig. And that actually adds up quite a bit. So that tsunami glass minnow costs like four bucks. So I just saved four bucks on one of my lost rigs. And let me know in the comments below, how frustrated do you get when you start losing rigs? And what's the most amount of money that you ever lost in a single day of fishing? And here you go. This is gonna be a perfect example of how I put it all together. And this is actually gonna be the biggest fish of the day right here. Now watch how I'm jigging. Watch how I slowed it down. Watch that hook set. Yeah. Good one? Uh, good's a relative term. Yeah, definitely head shakes with food. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep it free right there. There we go. Oh, yeah. There you go, Steve. That's how Johnny Fish a lot does it. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one, man. Why you coming here first? I was here, you dopey bastard. Why didn't you stay here, man? You're that greedy. You know, I thought you'd get something bigger. You got her. Oh, I was here, I was here with your big feet there. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm here for you, you know, Steve, and I want you to go hungry tonight, you know? Yeah, no. <laughs> And all right, fish lots, if you're getting value out of this video and you're entertained even remotely, go ahead and consider boinking that like button so that this video can spread to more fish lots out there so they can catch more flounder. And if you're interested in the gear that we're using here today, check out johnnyfishalot.com where I list everything we use here on the YouTube channel. We could streamline your buying experience, save you time, and make sure we get you all the gear that you need. And tip number five here is just be patient. Sometimes you have to wait out that bite. Again, going back to the previous yeah. tips, sometimes it's water movement, sometimes it's just the fish's preferences. Day to day it's different, but if you know yeah. it's a good spot, you know you got the bait, be, you know you yeah. got the structure, you know you got the tactics, just stick with it and you can wait out those bites. And all right, fish lots, it's one thing to catch the fish, but to make sure that you don't lose any meat on those delicious bones, click on this end card where I share professional tips on how you can fillet these delicious fish. Until next time, fish lots, I'll see you out there on the water.